Monday, February 13th, uh, 2012. If you please all rise and pledge the allegiance with me. Good evening, Council. Good evening, staff, and good evening, citizens. Hope everybody had a pleasant weekend. Um, and if I can please get the roll call. Ms. Berry. Here. Ms. Gardner. Ms. Gardner is absent. Mr. Kalin. Here. Mr. Peppy. Here. Mr. Snyder. Here. Mr. Webb. Here. Mayor Baruch. Here. Thank you, Council. And we don't have any uh, validations of special meetings. We do have an amended agenda that was in Council's packet and was posted earlier this evening. And one item was added to that. If I can get a motion on the revised uh, agenda, please. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the meeting agenda as advised, as revised. Thank you. If I can get a second. Second. Is Mr. Webb on the second. All in favor? Aye. Any no's? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. And we have uh, one proclamation this evening. And is Walter Warroff here this evening to receive it? I don't think he's here. Uh, Kathy, can we put this off on another agenda date? Um, I think the idea was to go ahead and have you to do it. Okay. present it. Great. And we'll mail it to him. Great. Um, and this is a certificate of appreciation to Walter Waldorf for dedicating uh, for dedicated volunteer service on the to the city of Falls Church Citizens Advisory Committee on Transportation, May of 2007 to January 2012. The City Council is grateful to its many citizens who volunteer their time to serve on city boards and commissions to help make Falls Church a better place to live, work, and to do business. You provided the city with insightful recommendations on transportation issues ranging from traffic calming to pedestrian safety. In particular, the city appreciates your recommendation on the neighborhood traffic calming program and your participation on the pedestrian bike and traffic calming advisory committee. The city council staff and other members of the CAT appreciate your dedication to the city. You have contributed significantly to the future success of the city of Falls Church. Nader Baruch Mayor on February 13, 2012. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Do we have anybody here to seek uh, to be sworn in for? Great. We do. Mr. Baldino? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. I only bite the staff, so you're OK. <laughs> this is for you. Thank Could you. Could you stand right over here so you Face me too on camera. Raise your right hand, please. And repeat after me. I, Paul Baldino, do solemnly swear. I, Paul Baldino, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the Citizens Advisory Committee on Transportation. As a member of the Citizens Citizens Advisory Committee on Transportation. According to the best of my abilities to help me God. According to the best of my abilities to help me God. Right, and if you'll just sign here, please. And I'll seal it later and send you a copy. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On to receipt of public comments, requests, and consent comments. Um, I've got two speaker slips, and then we have uh, the Planning Commission report, which uh, Chair Melissa Teach is going to be providing. I'm going to be taking the public comments first, if that's all right, with, uh, with Ms. Teach. And the first speaker slip that I have is from uh, Steve Shelby. Welcome, Michelle, Mr. Shelby. And if you just state your name and your address. 
So Steve have... Selby. I live at 833 Villa Ridge Road uh, and have for about 15 years, one of the older homes in, in Falls Church. I'm a member of the advisory board on recreation and parks, but I'm here to talk about the single most important issue facing the city, which is, of course, mulch. The uh, Falls Church, uh, George Mason High School boosters have launched their 19th annual mulch sale. And even if you don't need mulch, we'll stack this year's bunch right by last year's in your front yard if you need it. But please know that we're raising money for all the services over there that the boosters provide to George Mason High School for students that are there now and students that will come along. And it's a great facility, as you know. I hope you come over tomorrow night and see the boys basketball team continuing their uh, efforts. But the boosters provide a lot of equipment, scholarships, uh, the recognition dinners, all those great championship banners up on the, on the wall. So I just want you to know about that. You can go to the Mason Athletic site, which you should do to check on scores all the time anyway. And it's easy to find the mulch there. And again, even if you don't need it, uh, I hope you and your friends will, uh, will know about that. That's it. I just wanted you to know about that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next speaker slip that I have, it's actually on an agenda item, but uh, we're happy to take the comments now. And that's from Mr. Robert Lejeunez. Um, you may, would you like to speak now or when the agenda item is taken up? Well, well <clears throat> there are two issues. Will there be public commentary on the bond refunding? Uh, I will open it up for comment. Okay. Well, I'll save that issue okay. then. And if there's another but, issue that's not on the agenda that you wish to address now? Yeah, there is. Um, and that is the manner of passage and the substance of the fiscal targets. Um, it was TR 1135 that were passed back in December. I went out of town for a couple weeks and came back to find out that these has had been passed against the write-in petitions for more time and discussion. And a few of the council members mentioned that they were purely advisory and that we therefore didn't need any time. I would argue that you could therefore give them more time or, or that they did, simply didn't need to be passed at all if they're purely advisory. Um, more important is the substance of those fiscal targets. Um, if you actually fund those and they don't and they aren't just advisory and you actually fund those and stash away equivalent of two months of revenue, you'll be avoiding hard choices and essentially creating a soft budget constraint for yourselves or anybody else who might be in, in your in your chairs in the future. Um, and so it begs the question of what economic catastrophe are we anticipating? We just survived the mother of all recessions with excess funds on hand. So that suggests to us that the city's um, revenue base is more resilient than, than we admit. It was also based on a flawed or at least confusing attachment from Moody's Investor Services, um, which compares 2010 government and school district budgets interpreting undesignated fund general fund balance as a percentage of revenues as money that's not spent is simply incorrect. Um, you'd have to be seriously deluded to think that the median municipality across the country saved an extra 20% in 2010 and didn't spend it. Undesignated does not mean unspent. It simply means that other municipalities might not have as a detailed budget as the city does. And, you know, across the country, a half a million government sector workers lost their jobs in the last two weeks. I just, it's very hard to believe that the median municipality is saving 20% of its revenue. Um, I, I'm on record as all of those targets being far too conservative. And um, if we think that we need that kind of money, then perhaps we should go to the bond markets and see if they agree with us rather than taking an easier route of taxing um, taxpayers. So I'll save that commentary for the public opinions on the bond refinancing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those are all the speaker slips I have, and certainly council um, is going to be discussing um, some of the bond issues um, coming up and I'm sure other matters like the fiscal targets as well. Um, those are all the speaker slips I have. Are there any members of the public that wish to address items on the agenda or not on the ag agenda this evening? Okay. Not seeing any. Um, we are on to report of the city manager to council, Mr. Shields. Okay. Oh, and sorry about that. <laughs> so you just don't want to hear about the planning commission? No, I absolutely do. I had a great time reading the report. And just a reminder on dates, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and as a newly engaged man, you need to remember that date. <laughs> um, yes, I'm well aware of the date. I just wish my office was before they scheduled meetings. <laughs> yes. um, 
Good evening, Mayor Baruch, Vice Mayor Snyder, and Council Members. I am here to present the Planning Commissioner's 2011 Annual Report. You should receive a copy in your packet. As you can see from the report, the Planning Commission was very busy in 2011 with many regular meetings, work sessions, including several joint work sessions with the Council. Um, we dealt with a broad spectrum of issues from special exceptions to the CIP to the area plan process with the North Washington Street area. We also had representatives on many boards and commissions and task force to keep us abreast of all the issues that are important to good planning. And I don't want to go into a lot more detail because you have the full report in front of you, but I do want to talk a little bit about the future. Um, the Planning Commission has three major goals this year. One is to make significant process, progress on the comprehensive plan revision. Two, to continue to work through the ZOAC recommendations and three, to work as swiftly as possible on the area plans. Um, you're gonna see some progress in the next few months in meeting some of our goals. Um, the North Washington Street area plan should be finished in the spring. We hope to move on to the next area, which at this point we're looking at South Washington Street as being the next area plan that we would work on. Um, the staff is planning a public meeting for the citizens of the Greenway Downs this spring. As part of a resolution on one of the ZOAC recommendations to deal with the non-conforming lots issue that is all over Greenway Downs, most of those lots don't meet the standard zoning, so we want to put an overlay on that neighborhood to help them be able to develop um, and, and make it fairer for them because most of their lots predated a lot of the zoning rules, so that's an overlay will help, will help there. Um, so. Hopefully we'll be working forward, getting these goals go going, and we really do hope to have the um, compre comprehensive plan well on its way this year. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank our plan director, Jim Snyder, and the whole planning staff. Any accomplishments of the planning commission came from our strong staff support. They work very hard. Um, it's not a large staff. It's a lot of work to juggle, a lot of grants that they're dealing with, a lot of transportation issues on top of all the development um, reviews and everything that they have to do. So thank you for your time and the Planning Commission looks forward to another year serving the city and the City Council. Thank you very much, Ms. Steets. And before you go anywhere, since we have you here with us, I just want to uh, see if Council has any comments or questions they'd like to share with the Chair. Council, any comments or questions? Mr. Snyder. Just an expression of gratitude for all the hard work that, that you and the entire commission put in uh, week in and week out. It's a tremendous amount of public service, so thank you. You're welcome. I just want to echo uh, Vice Mayor Snyder's comments about all the work that the Planning Commission does and also share your, your thoughts about uh, Mr. Snyder as well. Um, I think uh, uh, he's been a great addition to the team um, as far as leadership. So, Mr. Shields, thank you for a good hire, and um, I think it was, it was – uh, so far, it's been a great, great relationship um, to have Mr. Snyder on board. Um, Ms. Teets, one, one thing I would just uh, make a plug on is if we can keep the momentum going on the area plans. Um, I know that we've got a lot of um, various site plans, et cetera, that are coming up that are very exciting, but uh, the long-term planning aspect has got to be an area where the Planning Commission, city staff, and city council keep their focus on, and it was certainly one of our um, priorities for for council so I would just share that with you and if we can just keep keep that moving make sure that the dialogue is happening but getting those plans out as we start seeing more and more development interest which is very exciting for the city as we try to expand our our commercial tax bases um, and make it make this even a better and more vibrant community so if we can keep that going I think that would be very helpful well and that's our intent it's a it's one of our um, main goals this year you know our the biggest issue with the area plants is always going to be staffing and as we juggle things that are coming in, I think the staff is doing the best they can. Um, so that's something to think about in terms of resources and budgets. I think we're going to be talking about that um, soon uh, and, and sort of what, what the direction is. So um, I think all that's going to be coming up during, during the budget discussions. But thank you again. Okay. We are now on to the report of the city manager to council, Mr. Shields. Uh, council, I just have a brief report tonight. I wanted the, the council to be aware, as, as you are, from notices that have come from COG about the death last week of Alexandria paramedic Joshua Weissman. And uh, on behalf of, of city staff, extend 
uh, our condolences to the family of paramedic Weissman and the entire Alexandria Fire Department. Um, it is very rare in Northern Virginia that we have a public safety officer, either in fire or in police, lose their life in the line of service uh, in response to a call, and that's a testament to the outstanding training and professionalism of our public safety officers, and, and Officer Weissman, or Paramedic Weissman, was a leader in that type of training. Um, but his passing uh, last week will be uh, noted across the region, and there are funeral services planned for this Thursday this week, and city staff are assisting uh, Alexandria Fire Department in those arrangements because it, it will be uh, something that the community will, will want to turn out for, and they do have um, the need for logistical support for that uh, for that, those funeral services. So I'm proud of our staff for stepping forward to offer that assistance. Um, uh, but just wanted to note that and express our condolences for the city of Alexandria. Mr. Shields, thank you and, and to staff for that support that we're providing. Other comments uh, from Mr. Shields or any questions from Mr. Shields? Thank you. We are on to business on the agenda. Ms. Bichelle, if you'd read the first item, please. Council, the first journey before you, TO 11-23, ordinance to amend Chapter 6, Buildings, Chapter 14, Environment, create Chapter 33, Property Maintenance, and amend Chapter 48, Zoning, to provide for a property maintenance code of Falls Church with civil penalties. And Council, our request uh, tonight uh, is to defer action on this item. Uh, the Planning Commission has reviewed it. The Planning Commission wants to work on this ordinance a little bit more before bringing its recommendations back to you. So our request is that this be deferred to Monday, March 12th, uh, to allow for that additional comment. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Shields? Ms. Barry? Mr. Shields, perhaps this is part of what Planning Commission is, is interested in doing, but I seem to recall um, that Council had received not only a letter from a constituent um, with, with concerns about the, um, the language as it was proposed, but also didn't we receive a report, was it from the, from ZOAC or from BZA that BZA. had, was it BZA? It was BZA. That had specific recommendations as well. So are those being taken into account as... Uh, those are. Uh, we've received correspondence from John Murphy, chair of the BZA, and we've worked with Mr. Murphy, the city attorney, and we believe we have those. Uh, we've addressed those. Um, the Planning Commission reviewed those comments and our responses to those, and I think the Planning Commission wanted some more work. Other comments or questions? If I can get a motion, please. Mr. Mayor. I move that we yeah, if you can hit your mic. Yes. Mr. Mayor, move deferral to move to defer second reading of public hearing on TO 11-23 to Monday, March 12th, 2012, <coughs> to allow for planning commission comment. If I can get a second. That's Mr. Kalen on the second. And Mr. Foster, given that this is simply a deferral, I, we don't need to open this up since we're not doing public hearing this That's evening. Correct. Okay. Um, if I can have the roll call, please. Miss mm -hmm. Barry. Yes. Mr. Kalen. Yes. Mr. Pepe. Yes. Mr. Snyder. Yes. Mr. Webb. Yes. Mayor Baruch. Yes. Thank you, Council. Just on this item, if I can just ask a housekeeping item. Um, if there are further changes, if we can um, get the code for the underlining color, I think that, that would help so we know where it's been between our last view of this and when we take it up in second reading. Thank you. The next item before you, Council, TR 12-02, Resolution of the City Council of the City of Falls Church, Virginia, authorizing the issuance and sale of General Obligation Refunding Bonds Series 2012. Happy Monday, Council. You have Thanks. before you a resolution to uh, refund general obligation bonds of 2004. Um, we are refinancing $14,615,000 uh, 
Um, it is from a uh, school issue for Mary Ellen Henderson Middle School, and uh, we are refunding that portion that is callable. The interest rate will drop from uh, the 3.4 to 4.1 percent range down to under 2 percent. The savings over the life of the bonds are a little over a million dollars. Uh, we have um, accelerated the savings in the first year to accommodate um, and mitigate some of the debt service issues in 2013. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. LaCondra. Are there any questions from Council? All right, we'll entertain them. Yes, questions? Um, Mr. Vice Mayor, it wasn't, it wasn't a question just to, to assure Council that, that Mr. Kalin and I, as part of the Budget and Finance Committee, um, have had an opportunity to talk to um, Mr. LaCondre and feel that this is a, a, a prudent move and uh, have no issues with the. Thank you very much. We'll entertain a motion and then we'll open it for public hearing. Motion. You want to go? I move that we uh, support TR 12-2 resolution uh, authorizing the issuance of sales civil obligation to be funded on the series. That's a, a motion to approve TR 1202. Is that right? That's correct. Is there a second? Yes, second. Thanks very much. Let's open it to a public hearing. We had at least one speaker slip, please. Thank you, Robert Lajeunesse, 409 South Virginia Avenue. Obviously, I wasn't privy to the discussions regarding the parameters of the refunding, but there is mention of a maximum principal value and at least some mention of the term. And so given that there are transactions costs involved with any refinancing, if any of you have refinanced your home, you know this, um, and that we are talking about historically low interest rate, my question would be why not go in deeper and longer? The current resolution is to um, amortize the bonds over the life of the existing bonds, but we've just heard um, that there are stormwater issues in the city. Many of you have articulated or the city's passed a resolution that it thinks it needs more reserves on hand, and uh, we still have school, uh, other school funding issues. So my question is why would you not go in deeper and longer when you have the opportunity to do that? And I guess this is a rhetorical question, but hopefully you've considered it. Um, when you have the opportunity to do that, at historically low interest rates. Thank you. Are there any other um, comments from the public? Ms. Pichette, did we receive any written comments on this item? No, sir. I'm going to close this to public comment and open it up for council comments or questions at this point. Let me... Uh... Let me ask Mr. Mayor, if I might, Mr. LaCondre, I think a citizen has asked a question, a couple questions. One, what are the transaction costs? Number two, why, um, why aren't we going with a longer bond period? And number three, why don't we do more bonds right now when the interest rates are low? All right, I'll, tr I'll try to answer them in the order you asked them. Um, first of all, the, the issuance cost is included in the resolution. The issuance cost is $230,000. Um, there may be some other closing costs, and that's why we've asked for 16 authorization not to exceed $16.5 million. Um, secondly, uh, generally, you, when you do refinancing, you refinance it for the remaining life of the asset. Generally, bonds are tied to the useful life of the asset that's being financed. So when we do refinancing, we don't extend it, even though it may lower our cost initially. But in the long run, it would, we would still be paying beyond the life of the asset. In terms of um, our bonding and taking advantage of the rates, we've already done one refinancing earlier this year, and we've also done um, some early debt financing be to take advantage of the low rates. As soon as the council uh, looks at the 2013 CIP program, we will come to council again because it will still be early enough to 
take advantage of the existing low rates. And whenever financing, refinancing opportunities present themselves, we look at them. This particular item would have been done earlier when we did the last refinancing, except that it did have a call provision in it, and we waited until it was callable to do the refinancing. Thank you. I think that answered the, the questions um, that our citizen had that uh, Mr. Snyder reiterated. Are there any other questions? I was oh, absolutely. Mr. Cameron. Uh, the other issue regarding bond uh, uh, issuance. If you don't have a specific uh, disbursement pattern, a specific project that you're going to utilize the funds for, you have to warehouse them. You have to carry the cost of liquidity as you put it into an institution. And they will always pay less than you paid for your issuance. And that is an additional cost that the city has to bear. So, and then there are risks associated with having money warehoused in substantial amounts, uh, also depending on interest rate movements for that. So one has to be careful because that borders on speculation. And uh, uh, that would not be something that uh, many of the members of the council would agree to. <clears throat> Council member comments or questions at this point? Okay. Not seeing anything further. Ms. Bishoff, you'd call the roll. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before we do that, were there any comments in writing? I want to make sure the record's clear. We considered any all the comments. No, sir. Thank you, sir. On TR 12-02, resolution on refunding bonds. Ms. Barry? Yes. Mr. Kalin? Yes. Mr. Pepe? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mayor Baruch? Yes. Thank you, Council. The next item before you, Council, is a proposed motion. And the proposed motion is to move to authorize the city manager to release a request for expressions of interest from the investor-owned and government-owned utility market regarding alternatives relative to the city's ownership and operation of the city water and sewer utility systems. Thank you, Ms. Michelle. Mr. Shields. Uh, thank you, Mayor Baruch and members of Council. Uh, there's a draft letter before the Council, which the Council has reviewed, and a staff report. And I wanted to make just a few notes about this action um, uh, for uh, 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 for, for those who are listening. Uh, what the request tonight is, the council has requested to authorize the release of a, of a letter or request for expressions of interest from the public and private utility market regarding alternatives relative to the ownership and operation of the city's water and sewer systems. And this comes out of discussions that we've been having and analysis that's been going under, underway with city staff and the city council on options for the future of the city's uh, water and sewer utility assets. At this point, in order for that analysis to proceed uh, with full and complete information, it is necessary and appropriate to formally request uh, the input from entities that may be interested in participating in alternatives relative to the city's ownership and operation of these assets. Uh, the attached letter uh, would, would be mailed out to industry, to both government-owned uh, water and sewer utilities and privately-owned water and sewer utilities to solicit their interest in participating in this process as the council goes forward in evaluating options. The City Council, in, in its earlier discussions, is undertaking this evaluation uh, for the future of the city's water and sewer systems with the goal of, a goal of providing the, the best possible stewardship of these assets on the beha behalf of its taxpayers and customers. Uh, the request for expressions of interest, or the REI, will solicit input from industry um, and, and help inform that deliberative process. By way of background, the city has operated a successful public water supply system since the 1930s, uh, just, just about 80 years. And the city's total service area is approximately 33 square miles with 34,500 accounts and annual revenues of approximately 20 million in the water fund. The city is a wholesale customer of the Washington Aqueduct, which provides drinking water for the city of Falls Church. Arlington County and the District of Columbia and the city water system delivers 
an average of 17 million gallons of drinking water to its customers each day, and we have a maximum capacity of approximately 38 million gallons per day. Uh, we're asking that interested organizations um, and the public who want to have information about the solicitation and the process going forward uh, can go to the city's web page and we've created a special web page that will be sort of a clearing house for this utility information um, at www.fallschurchva.gov backslash water future. Uh, the city is also asking for input on the disposition of or the future of its uh, sewer system, sewer utility, and the sewer utility is smaller than our water system. It's a gravity system that extends over an area of 2.2 square miles with approximately 4,000 accounts, serving roughly the area of the city corporate limits uh, with uh, some additional small areas in Fairfax County. The city contracts with Fairfax County and Arlington County for sanitary sewer treatment. Uh, this REI is part of a deliberative process that will play out over the coming months, and the City Council will engage in a deliberative process with key stakeholders and in industry leaders to chart out the future of these uh, important and critical water and sewer infrastructure systems. If at the end of that process uh, the decision is to proceed uh, with the status quo, then we will proceed along those lines with firm commitments. If the decision at the end of that deliberative process is to go in the direction of a sale of the system, uh, such a sale would require approval by the voters of the city in a referendum. Uh, and the deliberative process is being set forward to make it possible that if the council's uh, direction isn't uh, to go towards sale or disposition, that that would be, uh, it would be possible to have that before the voters at the November election this coming fall in 2012. I'd be happy to answer any questions from Council on, on the draft that's before you and the process that, uh, that we've discussed. Council, uh, questions before we turn to comments? Any questions for staff? Um, I just had one clarifying um, question. On the attachment um, on <coughs> line 177 through 180, this is question 8. Um, is that fairly self-explanatory of what the city is seeking? Well, the, um, I think that will help understand where uh, the respondents, what kind of information they can help, they can provide to help the council in, in this deliberative process. Um, I think principally we want to know who is interested and, and get their contact information so that they can be part of the discussion going forward. Uh, but question eight is designed to begin to pull out from the respondents as to what their thinking is and to what they're bringing to the table in terms of ideas uh, for the future of the system. Let me ask it a, a different way. Do we think that's sufficient if they do have an interest in purchasing the system or other alternatives that that question gets the industry thinking about that as well? Because that's sort of embedded in the select some alternative language. I'm just wondering if that needs to be more explicit. Certainly it's explicit in the staff report that we have and it's explicit in our discussions, but I don't know if it is in the letter. But I leave that up to staff to let us know if, if that's, if this is sort of the way it's just drafted or it's, it's me diving into the reading a little bit too much. It, it was, um, it is drafted broadly because we went broad the intent here is to solicit broad input, not to begin a negotiation or not to begin um, uh, a specific discussion, but to identify uh, who in industry wants to be part of this discussion um, and provide information about their qualifications to be seriously considered to be part of the discussion going forward. And so the, that question is by design uh, broadly wor worded if the council wants to make it more uh, specific and precise uh, we can certainly do that. Thoughts by council members? Thoughts by council members on that? <laughs> Mr. Foster, did you have any thoughts on this? Of making that language more precise and then we... Uh... Well, I think Mr. Shields um, correctly summarized the, uh, the reasoning behind paragraph 8 um, on page, page 5. So why don't we leave it as is? That's the intent. 
Other council member questions or comments? Mr. Snyder. Mr. Mayor, why don't I put a motion on the table? Would that be agreeable? Yes, why don't we do that and then we'll open it up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to authorize the city manager to release a request for expressions of interest from the investor-owned and government-owned utility market regarding alternatives relevant to the city's ownership and operation of the city water and sewer utility systems. If I can get a second, please. Second. That's um, Mr. Uh, Pepe on the second. Mr. Mayor, second, Mr. Pepe. Mr. Mayor, do you want to open it to the public? Yes, that's what that's um, I think uh, definitely in order for us to do. I'm going to open this item up for public comment. Are there any members of the public who wish to address um, this particular item? I don't see any. Um, Ms. Bichau, did we get any written comments, email, or, or otherwise? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close this item up for public comment and uh, open it up to council input. Mr. Mayor, let me make a couple comments. Um, first of all, that this action is being um, done on the basis of the strong advice of city staff, retained council, and retained uh, water experts. Secondly, um, this is not a decision as to any particular option, but rather is an effort to collect information so that we can weigh and balance the different options. Third, in my view, the objective here is to preserve the safety, reliability, and financial soundness of the city's water system. And, um, to recognize the significant risk that the city has run over the many years in um, creating a world-class water system. Thank you. Other council members, Mr. Kalen? Uh, Just to slightly amend, uh, what, not to amend, not uh, to change in any way what uh, David said vis-a-vis -vis the support or the recommendation from uh, council and from uh, uh, city staff. But some of the members here on the council have also been very interested from the very beginning and the get-go to deal with the situation in which we have an asset that is worth, uh, what well, we're in the process of uh, calculating what it's worth, uh, that is prohibited from providing and generating a return on equity so that the city has all of the liabilities, not, that's not true, the city has some of the liabilities, but in any event there is no specific advantage to the city in terms of return on equity that can be utilized as a result of Judge Ney's decision. As a result, it is very important that we seek other ways to convert this non-performing asset into an asset that can, in fact, be used by the city for its purposes. And that, to me, is one of the driving components of why this has to move forward. And I strongly support it. And uh, we go further and say that it should be carefully evaluated, but we should move quickly as is possible if we get the types of expression of interest that we hope for to move and get the necessary approvals uh, for uh, the sale of the water system. All right. Other council members? Um, I just want to echo uh, what uh, Vice Mayor Snyder said just a moment ago. Um, Council has been discussing um, the future of the water system for a number of years, including um, before many of us, including myself, were even on Council. And I think this is our real first opportunity to begin the dialogue publicly um, with our citizens and our customers and also industry. So I'm, I'm looking forward to certainly having the feedback and under our system, really the best way to do this um, is through um, the process um, of an RI, REI. Um, and again, I'll just reiterate that the council has been considering the future of the water system um, for many years now, and seeking industry input is simply the next step in the orderly, transparent, and comprehensive process where council is going to be considering all options and really charting our uh, path forward on how to deal with this um, very um, valuable asset that we provide not only to city residents but also to customers outside the city's jurisdiction as well. So I look forward to the discussions coming forward. I, I look forward to getting the industry input um, as well on this from all of our stakeholders. And with that, if I can uh, get the roll call, please. On the motion regarding the REI, Ms. Berry? Yes. Mr. Kalin? Yes. Mr. Pepe? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mayor Baru? Yes. Thank you, Council.
don't have any items on consent. And do council members have any business not on the agenda? Okay. Uh, council member comments and requests? Council, any comments or questions for staff or for each other? Any Anybody have anything to report out in their activities? Mr. Webb. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on Thursday, uh, Ms. Mester and Mr. Winstrom and myself all took part in the VML VACO uh, Legislative Day. Uh, it was a full day of activities interacting with uh, local governments from across the Commonwealth and an opportunity for us to express our positions on many issues that are before the General Assembly uh, currently. Uh, I want to uh, commend Ms. Mester for doing a great job of keeping us informed on council with uh, issues that are facing us in, uh, down in Richmond this year where we, I will tell you we're having a uh, tough time on many of the issues that are of importance to the city particularly in the uh, the gun arena the, um, we have seen that the one gun uh, law that has been in place in the Commonwealth for over 20 years is in the process of being repealed uh, we are in the process of seeing uh, more flexibility of people getting weapons and having them in public facilities oh but by the way the general assembly has carved themselves out of that particular arena of having the, um, those weapons coming inside of the the capital itself um, so again we are continuing to um, put forth these issues our issue our bills with regards to the uh, city charter amendments that we've sent down are, are moving through both chambers um, pretty swiftly um, but we uh, still, I think, have a, a tough road to, to go as a as a body, and particularly in Northern Virginia, because some of the issues that we uh, find important are of different demeanor of what those some of those folks who are from other parts of the state. But we will continue to do our part, and Ms. Mester has done a great job of keeping us informed, working with uh, our partners in the region on issues. Uh, that are before the General Assembly. I don't know if Mr. Snyder has any other comments. Mr. Snyder, anything on the legislative agenda? Yeah. Okay. Council. I'd just like to thank the work, Snyder. if I might, just to thank the work of Council Member uh, Webb and Cindy Mester as well. Thanks. Mr. Cowan. Uh, I guess now it's about uh, three weeks. I attended a COG meeting regarding uh, uh, their proposal to uh, the submit a document for sort of the, the way forward for planning for the next uh, 50 years for the region and one of the people who spoke on that was Stephen uh, Perlton who was the guest speaker much to my pleasant surprise and he had a number of interesting observations about it uh, one was that it was so broad that he was unclear of how much value it was I've never heard that <laughs> said in that type of meeting before uh, but also interestingly he was expressing concerns about the fact that uh, the region's competitive advantage uh, may be seriously negatively affected by the high cost of living in an area and that uh, when asked well where else could people go to do the jobs that they're doing here such as high tech uh, he indicated that Utah for example was a great place to, to work and it didn't cost nearly as much as working here uh, he said that this is something that might be addressed in part by greater cooperation between Maryland and Virginia uh, and he described the the body of water that separates the two jurisdictions as the Potomac Ocean uh, given the, the f there's in fact considerable lack of coordination roads end in different spots uh, BWI he cited for example uh, one should be integrating itself into national and uh, Dulles has now decided to try to go its, its own way and further bifurcating it uh, the fact that there is great amount of port facility in Baltimore doesn't seem to have been dawned on people in Washington so he was quite serious about the fact that these are uh, areas of improvement and could achieve considerable savings um, and uh, as a booster of Virginia he did say that uh, uh, in a number of the issues of disagreement between Maryland and Virginia he felt that uh, uh, that Maryland had the greater chip on its shoulder so just to pass that along uh, it was a very informal and surprisingly frank discussion I hope it wasn't uh, you know embargoed from all the stuff I've just mentioned but it was very very interesting but the highlight is the concern about uh, the, the competitiveness of this region because of our very high cost uh, structure. Thank you. 
Mr. Kalin. Other members of council? Um, just two quick events uh, to report that uh, some council members also attended with me along with um, city staff and um, some planning commissioners and also uh, school board members. Um, the president has made two visits in, in the area um, which um, various council members and city officials um, were present at. One was a few weeks ago where the president spoke um, uh, regarding housing and mortgage policies and two uh, this morning uh, when the president spoke about uh, the, the budget and also education mm -hmm. um, at NOVA. So um, I'm glad that other uh, council members and city staff and school board members uh, were able to attend one or both of those, those events. So those, and I had the privilege of attending both, as I, as I know other council members did as well. Um, that's, that's all I have to report, and I believe uh, last go around I reported on the mayors and chairs meeting, and there hasn't been one um, since that. I do have one um, additional request. Um, Mr. Shields, if we can, again, try to schedule the um, school board council liaison meeting, please. Vice Mayor Snyder, I saw you. Sorry, your light on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we um, had the opportunity to participate in the town hall meeting earlier this evening on the, um, the, the stormwater management plan, and uh, citizens asked a number of questions. Some of them were in regard to specific properties, but some of them were more generally on the plan. So hopefully when this comes before city council, there'll be answers to what the citizens asked. I do have a question about the money for the proposed 11 projects. So I think was originally estimated at 3.2 million and is now up to 3.7 million. One of the citizens asked about that. And as, as well, the question was what's the timing and, and how the citizens want more information about what it is we're really putting forward uh, in those projects. What are they really, what's the cost and what's the timing? So hopefully all that will be available when the council uh, acts on that uh, uh, stormwater management plan and there's a related political issue frankly and we're not the only jurisdiction that's facing the um, cost of Chesapeake Bay restoration uh, heard increasing numbers of news accounts as local jurisdictions look at this this is a huge financial burden on local government and hopefully we can engage through COG and elsewhere um, in some combined efforts to get those costs more uh, more fairly allocated thank you thank you any other comments by council members? Let's turn to approval of minutes of previous meetings. We have three sets, November 28th, 2011, January 9th, 2012, and January 23rd, 2012. Um, I have one edit on the set from November 28th, just a very minor edit. Um, this is on page 10. Um, it doesn't have a line number on it, but at the very top, um, he did not think council uh, the should um, should be replaced with could. Um, I don't think I meant to speak as an authoritative legal manner. I leave that to Mr. Foster. Change should to could. Thank you. I can do that. Ms. Barry? Um, and on line 110, I think the last name is Jennifer Gamble, or at least it's not Uh, let's see. Get rid of the W. Oh, okay. G A M B O A. That's at least that's the way it's spelled in other documents. Then I'll take that. <laughs> I can do that. Any other edits? Okay. If I can get a motion to approve all three sets as amended, please. Move to adopt all three sets of the minutes, but the minutes of November 28th as um, edited on the dais, from the dais. If I can get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Okay. Any noes? Okay, the ayes have it. The three sets of minutes are adopted. Thank you. If I can get a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. If I can get a second. Second. Okay, that's Mr. Webb on the second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
we are adjourned. Thank you, Council. <laughs>